departed from her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The prophet Isaiah. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. My dear friends in Christ, on this Christmas Eve, we listen to these words from the prophet Isaiah announcing that 700 years hence, the Christ child would be born, long ago prophesied. Now news like this, of course, would bring great joy. And this is why we come. We come with great joy to celebrate, to thank God for the gift of a savior born to die for us. In our opening hymn, we sang these words, and he feels for all our sadness, and he shares in all our gladness. Hopefully you are glad this time of year. We've made it to church despite the weather. We have arrived safely. We celebrate Christmas. But I wonder, is there any sadness among you? If you are honest, you will have to admit that in the midst of gladness, there is always sadness. In our bidding prayer, we prayed these words. We pray for the oppressed, the sick, the people that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged, the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not. This causes me great sadness. Of course, as a pastor, our main job is to preach the gospel so that this gospel can be shared with others, so that they can come to faith and know Jesus Christ and live with him forever, eternally. Eternal joy and gladness with the one who loves us perfectly. Now you know what I'm talking about. Are you a father? Are you a mother? Are you a son, a daughter, a sister, a brother? A co-worker? Someone in your family, someone you know who may not know the Lord Jesus. Every year, I think of these ones whom I know. It says in our bidding prayer, let us especially at this time remember them. Just remember them. Pray for them. Witness to them. Love them. Give your life for them. Now, I don't know, but we live in a country where things are increasingly becoming evil. But yet this time of year, we celebrate Christmas and it's all over the place. People buy trees and they buy gifts and there's greeting cards and there's all those Christmas programs. You can't escape at this time of year knowing something about Jesus. So as we come to this Christmas Eve service, now we have the opportunity together to lean into the manger and to peer and to see this child, this boy born for us, born into poverty, born to the Virgin Mary, born for our humanity, this Jesus who lays in the manger. There's only one Jesus who fulfills Isaiah's prophecy. However, it does bring me great unexplicable sadness to know that there are people whom I know 
who can gaze into that same manger and not see Jesus. They see something or someone else. They can celebrate Christmas, but they don't know their Savior. We lean forward. We peer into the manger. Tonight we want to see the genuine Jesus. That child prophesied from long ago, wrapped in swaddling cloths. However, there are all sorts of misconceptions and misunderstandings. We just cannot see the Christ child for whom he is. They want to see him for whom they want him for themselves. So tonight, people will look through the cool of the breeze and into the manger, and they will see nothing but a Christian mascot for humanity. They will not see a mighty Savior. They will will see a false Jesus who, who cheers people on to love themselves, to find themselves, to look into themselves, to find the God therein and to gratify their worldly desires. They will see a false Jesus that is all about serving mankind's will above the will of God. They will falsely see a Jesus that waters down the holy word of God to avoid all conflicts, all offense, to overlook sin, to always be there to positively cheer us on. People will not see him correctly. And other eyes will gaze into the manger and they will look upon this child and they will see nothing more than a spiritual guru for humanity, a spiritual guru. They will falsely see Jesus as a way and a truth and a life, not the way, the truth, or the life. They will see him as a spiritual guru that sends people to heaven but dismissing hell. An all-tolerant baby in the manger. They will not see him correctly. And others will gaze into the manger and not see the genuine Jesus. They will see nothing more but a good moral example of what we are to emulate. He's nothing more than a good rabbi. They will not see him correctly. And then some, some driven by money or by power, will look into the manger and and not see a savior. They will see dollar signs. A false Jesus who's, who's come to give us health and wealth and prosperity. A Jesus who will supposedly grant health and wealth to all those whose faith could reach a certain level. They will not see him correctly. And it gets worse. There are some who stare into the manger and see the baby as a new Moses, a new lawgiver born for humanity. This baby is all about giving us new laws, improved laws, so that we can live our best lives now. They will not see him correctly. And then, dear friends, there are some who are driven by politics. They will regard this babe in the manger as the beacon of hope for a political party. The baby will grow up to become the political sanctifier of any campaign wanting the votes of the religious right. They will not see him correctly and looking into the manger. There there are others who are going to see Jesus as the soft and the mild and the cuddly and the gentle, and they assume that this boy will grow up to cuddle little lambs and to accentuate emotions, a false Jesus who exalts emotions and extols experiences and lifts up personal opinions against true teaching. They will not see him correctly. 
And finally, friends, there are some who will look into the manger tonight and they'll see a baby. He's whole, he's healthy, he's sound, he's without pain. They will keep trying to imagine that this Jesus, this baby, was not born to die on a cross. For these people, there's no blood, there's no wounds, there's no suffering. It's all too much for them, which means that they will see this Jesus who lies in a manger like a precious moment's figurine. In other words, they are going to imagine in their hearts a false Jesus who has been sanitized from the messy blood and the scary looking cross and they want to keep it that way. They will not see the true Jesus. So indeed, many people will gaze upon the manger and they will see, they will see with the eyes of faith the genuine Christ. But many, many, there's a large assortment of the false and the counterfeit and the mistaken identities of who this baby really is. They will not see him. My sadness comes from people whom I know, people who are close to me. You can name them in your hearts too. And the problem with all these mistaken identities is that he's not born, Christ is not born to be our Christian mascot, to be a good moral example. He's not born to make us healthy or wealthy or to be full of money and possessions, not born to bring us new laws of God. He's not a new political figure. He's not born to be a mamby-pamby savior, to avoid the cross of Calvary. But we gaze into the manger tonight if you see any of those things, then you will not see the genuine Christ. You will not see him correctly. So dear friends, my precious friends, my dearly beloved, he was born as a gift to humanity, born for all of us, bankers and farmers and students and grandparents and young and old, male and female, born for all, born for you. Not born in heaven, not born for the angels, not born to save the demons, but rather born for you on this earth. He descended to us, dived down from heaven as only a genuine Savior could, and as the genuine Savior, the all-knowing and the all-powerful and the all-sufficient, the bleeding and the dying and the rising Savior is for you and for me. My dear friends, there is only one Jesus who lies in the manger, the Jesus who would undergo great, great suffering, rejection, to be killed and to rise again after three days. There is only one Jesus in this manger, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God is with us. One Jesus who lays in this manger, a savior, who comes to us to deliver all of us from sin, death, hell, the power of the devil. Now take a moment, take a moment now and lean into the manger. See the savior, look into it. There's the baby. He will not shrink from his course of life on earth. He will not be afraid. He will not be hesitant. He will go all the way to the cross. He will live that perfect life for you. And by dying on the cross, he will take your sins and assume all of them on his body to make you righteous before God. Take a moment this Christmas Eve. Look into the manger. The baby lies in the manger. He will grow up to face persecution by all of those religious leaders. They will take his life and he will lay it down freely and willingly so that you will have it. You will have life. He was born unto you for this. 
And out of the grave he will spring back to life, a man, a body, and a soul, the Savior who was born unto you, alive out of death to redeem and save you on earth. For unto you a child is born, to you a son is given. May it be so among us all, and may it be so among all those whom we know. In the name of Jesus, amen.
The sixth lesson is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. We sing, What Child Is This? The seventh lesson is also from the Gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter. 
And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And so we sing. Angels we have heard on high. The eighth lesson is from the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. 
The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So we sing on Christmas night, all Christians sing. O oh God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer. We may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have. Gracious Lord, as we light these candles tonight, may they also remind us of Jesus, the light of the world.
Keep us always in this one true faith, we pray. At this time, we will have the lighting of the candles and we will all remain standing. The lighting will go from the pastors to the choir and from the choir to the first person in the pew and on down. And a reminder that when you light your candle, the one being lit is to be tilted while the one lit is upright and vertical so we do not drop wax on the pews. And during the lighting of the candles, we will also sing Silent Night. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.